Do you remember the game when we were kids? It was a stare down contest. When we would just stare at each other and see who would blink first. And well, if you were that person that blinked, you lost. Let's talk about how that can relate to your real estate negotiations with 10, 10, 10 home buying tactics that you can use today. My name is Steve Arthur and I am a local realtor here in the Long Beach area and all the surrounding cities powered by nationwide real estate executives. Now, if this is your first time seeing me here on YouTube, maybe you might want to uh, hit the subscribe button, maybe ring that bell so you will be notified every time I do put out a new video. And I do make these videos every single week, all about Long Beach, all about the things that you want to know about, where you want to live, where you want to eat, and of course, where you want to play, and even the top 10 home buying tactics that will work for you today. So if you or anybody you may know is thinking about relocating to the Long Beach area, all you have to do is give me a call, shoot me a text, send an email, or just register on my website and I will personally get hold of you. So Perhaps one of the more interesting things that you can do in real estate negotiations or just in negotiations period is simply ask a question and like a good fart just let it linger so just think about the impact of that for one moment when you or somebody asks a question and then it just goes quiet like chirping crickets what does that make you want to do it makes you want to fill in that awkward void that awkward silence somebody wants to speak up because it is uncomfortable right so it is true whenever you're in negotiations just throw out a question and let let it linger let them respond and this just goes back to the old stare down game who, who blinks first loses who, who speaks first loses so let's take a closer look at the top 10 things that you can do to help negotiate the terms now the first thing to do is when you see a property that you are very interested in is get all the available information that you possibly can gather on that property and how do you do that well you ask your trusted real estate advisor to run a comparative market analysis for you you're gonna have him perform a CMA in complete detail for you on that property so what is this going to do for you the first thing that it is going to do for you it is going to identify the realistic sales price and what is trending in the area in relation as to what the seller had priced the home. That's number one. Now number two, you can also investigate the zoning and planning just to make sure that the city's plans for the neighborhood are in the same line as you to enjoy your lifestyle. And the third thing you want to do in your research, check the crime stats and check the crime maps. Now you got to make sure that the crime levels are acceptable to your lifestyle or not if you're going to buy in that neighborhood. Just check on the school zones themselves to make sure that if you are planning to have children or if you already have children, that these kids are going to be very well educated in the public school system. Or where is the nearest private school if that's a route that you want to go? There is so much process that goes into the research phase that that is why it is such a great great idea and very very wise idea to use your trusted real estate advisor to the extended maximal amount period as much as you can to answer all of your questions best to be determined with all the information that they have before going into contract in doing so you will make sure that you are buying the right house and for the second thing you can do is investigate the house now we're not talking Let's call the FBI and all that. No. Uh, all we're talking about is the home inspection. And it is crucial because we need to investigate the bones of the structure. Make sure it is a solid structure for you and everything is in good condition or at least ways of knowing the condition of the maintenance on the property. We will know what needs to be addressed now 
and also if there's any major financial pitfalls on the horizon such as maybe a roof doesn't have that much life in it but the HVAC system it's needs a big tune-up and some appliances might be getting bad so it is very important for you to know these things up front to know what you're gonna have to deal with so that your new dream home doesn't become your money pit nightmare Now the third thing is being in fucking jump mode, or just the jump mode as I like to call it because for the old saying, you see something you want, jump on it. Because after all, you are trying to find your new house, a place to call your home, a place to raise your family, a place to be your kingdom, your domain. So you need to be ready to be in that jump mode when you see that home that you are very interested in. So when you've done your research and you get ready to go into investigation mode before anybody else does. And you know from these pictures that this home is at least a four star out of a one to five star rating in your book. So you know that you need to go see that house as quickly as possible with your trusted real estate advisor. And when you get to the house, if the pictures actually match what the home looks like, and you are very happy with the reality of everything, you need to jump on that right away. Because no matter of what the market conditions are, if it's a buyer's market, a seller's market, a stabilized market, there are other buyers out there thinking the exact same thing on that exact same home that you are. So who in the end is gonna be calling that property home? My name is Bond, James Bond. Oh shit, where did he come from? That's not fair. Now it could be you from all your research, your investigation, and being in your jump mode. And this is the reason why I always suggest that you write down what's most important in your home. The reason why you're buying that house is because, fill in the blank, you will be able to approach the hunt with a clear mind and a fresh perspective. So tactic is days on market and this comes up a lot when I talk to uh, home buyers you know they're like hey you know we want to get a really good deal doesn't everybody now when we're talking about counting the days on market and the relation to a good deal is to know your average days on the market in that community for example if the average days in that community say a certain zip code is 30 days and this house that you are really, really interested in has been on the market for 10 days. It is now a good time to go in and drop that price. And it all depends on what the comparative market analysis looks like, and that's the CMA. So that's number one. But if all is good with the pricing there, it is probably not within your best interest to approach that with the price drop. Because in reality, it's probably gonna backfire on you. So you got to be ready to face the realities of every time that you put in an offer. Know that there are three possible outcomes that can happen. One, they can accept it. Two, they can reject it. Or three, they can negotiate on it, depending on the mindset of the seller and the listing agent that they are working with. And it may or may not work with the offer amount that you are going in with. So now when we're talking about days on market, remember when we had said that the average days on market in your community was 30 days. So now when we're hitting day 40, day 50, day 60. So what do you think is going through their mind? They're probably freaking out like crazy.
guy really wants to talk to his agent. <laughs> Sorry, I had to leave that clip running. It was just a little too good for me. Can I ever sell this place? Can I get on with my life and get to where I want to be? And likely if they have a good trusted real estate advisor they are working with, what you are probably noticing is that price reductions are happening around 21 to 40 days. Trying to find that right price that will entice a buyer to jump all over. So if you want to get a better deal on a property in terms of price or in terms of term, the devil is in the details with terms. What happens if you need buyer's closing costs and the market is not in the position to provide that for you? From the mindset of the sellers, if you don't put an offer on that home, somebody else is going to come along, they're going to jump on it and they're going to do it while you're still thinking about it. So whenever you see homes that have higher days on market, take a closer look at them and see, do you want a better price or do you want better terms? Because the longer that the house sits on the market and if the seller truly wants to sell his home, this sales motivation will definitely pump up his motivation because they want to get that home sold which means they will be more open-minded to realistic negotiation in the form of perhaps getting some buyer's closing costs paid for or something else in the contract that you need put together for you. Now, I do want you to consider one thing and I wanna be 100% understandable about this. Buyer's closing costs are called what? Buyer's closing costs. So who is really responsible for this cost? You, the buyer because the seller has what we call seller closing costs. So we have to have a clear mind going into negotiations to realize how this is going to play out. So we need to consider three different things here. We need to consider the worst outcome, the best outcome, and the most probable outcome. And when we identify this, we are definitely putting ourselves into the jump position because we know what we are doing. We know what strategies we are using. We know what tactics we are using to get you into the right home. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and cut it there. We're gonna do numbers six through 10 on the next video. Get a little bit long, so I didn't wanna lose your interest too much. So anyways, my name is Steve Arthur. I am a local realtor here in the Long Beach area, powered by Nationwide Real Estate Executives. So until next time, you take care.